it all comes hard on the heels of a satellite version of the same thing. But what does it all mean for you at home? Mike Liggins has been finding out. Are you confused about digital TV? Well, if you are, don't worry, because it is a bit complicated, and you're in good company. How much do you know about digital television? Not a lot. I know a little bit about it. Uh, interactive, I believe. Who's OD? Is it one's digital OD or something, is it? Like one firm's called OD? So, what is it all about? Well, don't worry too much about the technical stuff. Suffice to say that it should mean more choice and better quality. Now, there are three ways that you can get digital television. Satellite, cable, and terrestrial, using a conventional aerial. And it's digital terrestrial on digital, which is being launched this weekend. Only that in some parts of the region, you can't get it. This is the Tackleston transmitter, which serves Norfolk and North Suffolk. But it hasn't got the right bit of kit on it yet. So why the delay? The delay with TAC is one of finding uh, a set of frequencies which won't interfere with each other, not only with our existing analog system, but with the continental system. TAC being high and relatively powerful, the signals broadcast from there can easily travel across the continent and it's been a sort of circular negotiation with the European broadcasters to find a set of frequencies that we can all work with without interference. Happily, Tackleston will be ready by the summer. Ish. Now the Sudbury transmitter isn't ready yet either, but it will be by Christmas. Now if you're served by the Sandy Heath transmitter, serving Northamptonshire, Bedfordshire, lovely places like that, well, no problems. It's fine. And what about good old Look East? Well, you can't get it on any of the digital services yet, but they're not switching off the old analog signal until well into the next century. So thank goodness for that. Mike Liggins, Look East. Well-known technophobe Mike Liggins taking you through the, the business of digital TV. If you want to know from someone who really knows about it, why don't you ring the new service provided by the BBC this is the number. All your questions on Digital TV, 08 700 100 123. A man who owes the courts more than £1,000 for refusing to take down a sign in his front garden says he'll fight on even if it means going to prison. The pensioner from Felixstowe says the sign represents his fundamental right to free speech. For 28 years, Francis Gilbert has had a board in his front garden, where he's displayed his religious and charitable posters. But when he applied last year to replace his old board with a new one, his local council objected. There's only room for, for one double crown poster. Um, if I was able to have two, then, then one could, could um, extend the teaching, as it were. But Mr Gilbert decided his old board should go anyway. And in came a new double advertising board, which the council says is obtrusive and out of place. They say they don't care what's on it, it's the board itself which is unacceptable. There was a, a council notice put on that uh, post there, asking people to comment. And no one objected at all. The only persons to object were Felix the Council. So far, Mr Gilbert's sign has cost him two years wrangling with the Council and over £1,200 in fines and costs. But he feels so strongly about it that he says he's prepared to go to prison. The Council certainly does not want for this sort of offence uh, to have Mr Gilbert having to go to court. But if he finds himself in contempt of court, then obviously that's out of our hands. Well. But Mr Gilbert says he'll continue to fight the council as his Christian message board is more important than anything else. Anne Bowden, Look East, Suffolk. Uh, it's the most popular instrument in the world and it's experiencing a revival. 25 million of them are sold in the UK each year and apparently anyone can pick one up and play. We're talking harmonicas and to play one well takes years of practice. One of our most talented players is from Cambridge. He's the only student in Britain studying the instrument to degree level. Amanda Goodman went along to meet him and take a few lessons. It sends you a 
gorgeous and extremely expressive. The harmonica has been around for more than 3,000 years, originating in China, but it was only 50 years ago that the musical establishment accepted it as a true instrument, and now its popularity is soaring. This year, we heard harmonica on the Spice Girls and on Oasis and Hollyoaks, Alanis Morissette, um, Last of the Summer Wine. I think it's really, it's always been there. I think it's just a consciousness. We're just slightly more aware of it now. It's a very passionate instrument. I find that, uh, well, it just affects my whole body when I play, and a lot of harmonica players would agree. <laughs> Steve from Cambridge is the only harmonica student in the UK. Now he's passing on his skills to 15-year-old Nicky, who's competing in this weekend's National Harmonica Finals in Ely. Because it's directly from the mouth and not using any hands or anything, you can put your emotions from your throat and from your heart into it. Now Steve assures me that the harmonica is the easiest instrument to just pick up and play. But I better warn you, Steve, I haven't got a musical bone in my body, so... That's no problems, don't worry. Yeah, as long as we start with something simple, no problems. So what I'd like you to do is open your mouth quite wide. No, not, not that one. <laughs> and draw in on holes one, two and three. Okay. And blow. Draw. Keep going. Good. <laughs> what a mover, or should I say shaker? Mm. Phil, on to the weather. <laughs> yeah, didn't she do well? That was really good. Weather-wise, not 